Good morning, everyone. I hope you are well. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, if you are visiting us, you are also most welcome. I, I want to start off this, this morning by saying I really love my family. And I can imagine that many of us this morning miss our family that might be on the other side of the lockdown. But I want to encourage you also. God loves family. And over the years, I've really grown to love His family. I'm a part of and I cherish the church because Jesus cherishes the church. In Ephesians 5 verse 29, we can read, For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes, and listen, cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of His body. I believe we as so far are, are growing as a family. That means business. And I'm so excited about that. So what I'm going to be sharing this morning is not going to be a correction. Much more, it's an encouragement for us to keep on doing what we are already doing and to bring along those that might have grown quiet or might have grown weary. And this morning, if you don't have a spiritual family yet, I really pray that God will lead you and add you to a healthy family where you can be blessed, but not only that, but you, you can also be the blessing that God has called you to in that church. I was reminded of the word that Robert said at the beginning of this year, that, that we should return to simplicity. And I would like to share a scripture uh, that describes some of the activities the people devoted themselves to when the church was born. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and prayers. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and prayers. Acts 2 verse 42. Now, I believe this is a word for us in season and I would also almost suggest that, that these simple activities that the early church was devoted to should be foundational in every season of church life. It highlights the simplicity we as the church are called to live in. And I believe there's great power in insimplicity. At the start of 2020, one evening I ran, randomly found myself at church and I was just looking at the empty empty chairs and I was stirred and with expectation I prayed, God, don't give us a full church, but make us a filled church, full, filled of his full of his spirit and full of his word. And not only does God have a great sense of humor, but he's also a God that answers prayer. Uh, our church building has been empty for days, but by faith, I really sense that God is filling us. And I want to ask you this morning, are you willing for His filling? I like what someone recently said. And, and what they said was, we mustn't ask God to do in us what He wills, as, as, he, as if He is waiting for us. No, much rather, we must pray that we can get on board with what God is already doing. And, and I just believe when God is doing something, there's a window of opportunity. And I want to urge you, do not spiritually isolate yourself in this time. Do not de deceive uh, yourself in passivity, but much rather, uh, let's respond to what, what, what God is, is saying to us and what He's already doing to us. Now, talking about getting on board in this window of opportunity, I would, I would like to emphasize um, this, this, the, the, the importance of being ready for that window of opportunity. Just sharing um, from one of what I've learned from one of my big passions in life, and that's surfing. Now, it's, 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 you, can, you can get a surf report that there's some good waves coming on Friday. And, and if you're not awake and if you don't watch the surf report, you might not even know that there's good waves coming. And it's the same with the Word of God. If we are not going to be attentive, if we are not going to press into God, we will not hear the Word in season. 
But then if the surf report comes and the word of God in season comes, then we need to respond. I need to get my gear. I need to get to the beach. I need to get on my gear. And then I need to get into the water. And then when I'm in the water, I need to position myself. I need to, to read the ocean. And, and just, just, like with, we, just like how we need to discern the things of the Spirit. And then when the, the, the Spirit of God speaks to us, when that wave comes, we need to paddle. We need to respond. We need to obey with all that we've got. Otherwise, we're going to miss that, that wave. We're going to miss that window of opportunity um, of, of what God wants to do in us. I want to ask us, are we ready to respond, to get on board with what God is already doing in us, Church of God, Shof of Alphas Bay? Now, in this new normal, we are no longer able to go to church as we were used to. And I recently heard a quote, but, which I really actually liked. And it said, we were never meant to go to church in the first place. We are meant to be the church. Okay, let me just repeat that. We were never meant to go to church as if church is a place where we need to be and then it is church. No, we are meant to be the church. Now, I've, I've going on, I'm getting excited. I've heard it said that in our life with Jesus, we need to get out of the driver's seat. We need to give the keys to Jesus and we need to get in the back of the car, in the boot. Now, that's a very good example um, in our lives where, where we surrender to God and entrust Him with, with the course of our lives. It's a, it's a great example of, of surrendering and trusting Him. But recently I've had an added alternate view around this, especially when it comes to church. So if we as the church are in the trunk of the vehicle, we are still passengers. We have not been called to be passengers in the church of God. We have been called to be the vehicle. I want to repeat that. As the church of God, we have not been called to be passengers. We have been called to be the vehicle. Now, if we, if, if we just remain in, in, in the boot, blindly hoping that someone else will get us where, where we need to be, well, I think we will be missing out on something. I just want to remind us of these scriptures. Philippians 2 verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Listen to this. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We need to take responsibility. We cannot just be passengers. Ephesians 5 verse 14, a scripture that's on my heart a lot for us um, in this time. Therefore, he says, Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you life. I said a few weeks ago, when Jesus said, It is done, it is finished on the cross, it was a final invitation. And Jesus says to each and every one of us, Follow me. And we need to decide. Are we going to remain passengers who go to church? Or will we actually become the vehicle God has called us to be and actually be the church. If you believe you can't hear the voice of God, if you believe you can't hear the voice of God, you're believing a lie. If you don't believe that the Word of God can become alive to you and you can get revelation out of it yourself and you always think you need to get second hand from this YouTuber and from that pastor and so on, it, it, it's a lie. You yourself when you ask the Holy Spirit to break open the Word, it can become alive to you. Yes, there's a place where we, we teach one another and we explain and we share around the Word of God, but you must believe there's a place where it can be alive to you yourself. If you don't believe that you can be a part of the broken bride of Christ, that He is making whole, then you're believing a lie. If you don't believe that you can build in to, and that you can be a blessing to his body. Well, that's a lie too. Let's look at Romans 12, verse 4 to 8. For as in one body we have many members, 
And the members do not all have the same function. Listen to that word, function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another, having gifts, listen there, gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Listen to this. Let us use them. Gifts are not supposed in, in the life of church to be sort of just displayed there on a, on a cupboard like old trophies. No, gifts that we have in God are to be used. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness, Believe it. God has placed a gift, a function in you. Believe it. He has called you by name. And He has destined you to walk in good works. Believe it. Believe it. As a child of God, you can discern the things of, of the Spirit. You can pattern and catch that wave. Believe it. You can be the vehicle that gets into gear and carries someone else to Jesus. Believe it. You have something to give. Yes, you. You, you can make a disciple. Now, just as a vehicle has many parts, we know, as we've heard in that portion of Scripture, so does the body of Christ. There's no way each one of us can be every part. If you follow Jesus, if you say you follow the head, you have to be part of the body. I don't know if you've ever seen a part that has been severed from the body. You, you don't want to see it, okay? Let's rather focus on your role. If you're not being part of the body, all of us will suffer. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 12, verse 25 to 27. That there be, may be no division in the body. God's serious about division and, 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 and factions in the body and in impartiality. That there be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. Listen to this. If one member suffers, if one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Listen to this. Are we causing suffering? Because we as individuals are separating ourselves from the body of God. Because we are holding back in our personal pursuit of God. If we are holding back the gifts the functions that God has placed in our lives? Are we causing suffering to the body because of these things? From another perspective, we can all get so busy and we can all get so preoccupied with our gifts, but are we moved when one of our brothers or sisters are suffering? If we the church remain passengers, passive passengers, we will never grow to the fullness of to which God is calling us as His church. We are not meant to make a building look full on a Sunday. We are meant to be a vehicle filled with the Word and the Spirit of God. We are meant to be the church. Now, how can we be the church during this time that we are all scattered as mustard seed? Well, we said we turn to simplicity. When we refer to Acts 2 verse 42. Let's devote ourselves to the Word of God. Now, if you will never thrive if you don't feed on the Word of God. Matthew 4 verse 4, one of my favorite scriptures where it says, Man shall not live from bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the Word of God. In other words, if we don't feed on the Word of God, we will not live spiritually. We will die. Let's devote ourselves to prayer. I paraphrase a quote of Leonard Ravenhill, um, where it basically says, if we as the church, if we as the children of God, 
are not praying, we're playing. So let's devote ourselves to prayer. Let's devote ourselves to the breaking of bread. Like we did last, last Sunday when we had communion and when we have meals together. Let's devote ourselves to fellowship as we are also doing today. Now I want us to, to zoom in a bit on this word fellowship this morning. The Greek word for fellowship is koinonia, which can be translated as communication, community, co communion, participation, association, intimacy or contribution. So how can we koinonia? Well, we can apply all of the above. We can be a community. Let's, let's be community and check in with one of the brothers and sisters in our small group who might have grown quiet, who might be suffering. Remember, if one part of the body suffers, the whole body suffers. Let's contribute to people's physical needs in this time. But, but that's important. As it says in James, don't, you, don't just say, Oh, bless you, brother, but the, someone doesn't have bread at home. So let's contribute to people's physical needs, but also much more. Let's contribute to people's eternities. There's nothing as special as someone's eternal course of life being altered, being, being restored and found and, and directed by a Heavenly Father. How can we coin a near? Let's participate by fulfilling our role in the church, by sharing the gift that God has, has placed in us, by fulfilling our function as, as a member, as a part of the body. Let's build one another up by communicating, by communicating the truth in love and just see how despite our circumstances during these times, we as the church can actually still grow. Look at Ephesians 4, verse 15 to 16. But speaking the truth in love, remember we said, Koinonia, part of it is communicating. We can't have community without communication. So there's a place where we pray from one another and we spend time in the Word. And as, as, as after we've spent time in the Word and we've been praying for one another, then we can speak the truth in love to one another. Speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things. This is powerful stuff. May grow up in all things into Him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined, knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working, effective working, by which every part does its share. We can only be working effective if every part does its share. Listen to this. Causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. The edifying of itself in love. There's a place where as we, as we are the church, as we, together we, we can be the church. And just by loving and, and playing our part, we can edify the church. The church can grow. I want to ask you, are we going to wait till lockdown is over or corona is cured? Yes, we are suffering some discomfort and we are suffering separation. But we're not in a war. There's no bombs falling around us. And at the same time, we are not being persecuted. We are not being martyred. Not yet. I want to say, let us not wait for that day to come before we will awake. Awake, O oh sleeper, arise from the dead. Let us not wait for that day to start shining Christ, to see His light in us. Let us be the church today. By faith, I believe, we as the church can look beyond this lockdown as just a nuisance, but rather see it as a window of opportunity as we get on board to what God is already doing in us. And I believe we can grow in depth as a community that spends time with one another, and as we spend time growing our love for one another, that we will love one another so much that the, the hurting world out there can't help
but, but come to us wanting to know who is the Savior King that we love so passionately. As I was preparing, I just felt this, that our Father wants all of His children, you, as, 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 as I mentioned some lies today, He wants us, he, he wants His Spirit to lead us into all truth, that we can be free. Our Father wants every one of His children to be whole. And at the same time, He wants His children that are astray, still astray, that are lost, that are broken, that does not know His voice. He wants those children that are astray also to come home, that they might be restored and grow in Him. And I want to say, I want to say this morning, let's not talk about it. Let's not sing about it. Let us love. Let us koinonia. So for Valpus Bay, I want to tell you this morning, I love you. I want to tell you, battle for that way. Be the vehicle of God. Play your part. Play your part in His body with your unique gift and bring along those who are suffering. Bring along those who are suffering. I just want to end off for us in prayer this morning. Father God, we thank you that you love us. That you love us as, as, as family, Lord. You call us your children and, and you, Jesus taught us, Jesus your son taught us to pray and to call you our father. We thank you this morning where we might be separated from our, our physical families, where we might be separated and isolated from our spiritual families and dispersed and where we can only maybe meet in smaller groups. Thank you that we can know God, you love us. And, 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 and you see us as part of your family, Lord. And I pray for us in this, in this morning, Holy Spirit, that there where we are suffering, Lord God, there where we are in passivity, Lord God, there where we have, have, have fallen into a spiritual slumber, Lord, I pray that, that Holy Spirit, that you will quicken us, that you will quicken us, that you will wake us up, Lord God, there where we are hurting, Holy Spirit, that you will comfort us, that we can that we can work out, that we can take our own salvation, Lord God, that we can take it seriously, Lord God, that this window of opportunity, this thing that I believe you want to do in us as your church, Lord God, that, that, that we will hear your voice, Lord God, that you will give us conviction in our hearts, Lord God, that you are calling each and one of us as individuals, Lord God, to, 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 to play our role, Lord God, to unite ourselves in unity, Lord God, with, with your church, with your body, Lord God, with the bride of Christ, Lord God. And in that place, Lord God, that we can be your church, that we can be a vehicle for your spirit, Lord God, to fulfill your purposes, your will, Lord God, in this town, in this season, wherever we are at as your children, Lord God, that we can be your vehicle, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that, 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 that we will be aware, Lord God, of those that are around us, maybe even closer than we think, Lord, in our physical families, Lord God, in our spiritual families, those that are suffering, Lord, that we will take note, Lord God, and that we will do something, Lord God, that we will, will, will get together, that we will continue in this, Lord God, that we will encourage one another to, to get into the Word, Lord God, that they where they're suffering, Lord God, that we will come together, that we will break bread together, that we will devote ourselves to fellowship and devote ourselves to pray together. Father, we thank you for your patience with us, but we also thank you for your grace that enables us, Lord God, in this time, Lord God, to discern the things of the Spirit, Lord God, and to, to, to in the Spirit, be ready to paddle and to catch this wave, Lord God, that you are sending our way, Lord. We just thank you, Lord God. We thank you that we can be excited for what you are doing in us, Lord God, that our church building might be empty, but that you are filling us with your love. That your Holy Spirit pour out love in our hearts, O God. That we will love 
one another. And as we love one another and build one another up and speak truth into one another's lives, that we will go out and love this world and bring glory to you. Lord Jesus, we love you. Father, we love you. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for our brethren. And we thank you, Lord, that your kingdom will come and your will will be done. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for taking the time out to spend time together there, wherever you are, to, to engage the Word of God. Enjoy the rest of your day <laughs> having fellowship. And let's go out and be the church. Love you guys. Looking forward to seeing you wherever we can during the week. Keep well.